Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to Test 2 Plus. I'm Trace, this is episode three of five on survival. If you've never seen Test 2 Plus before, we take a big topic and we break it into a bunch of pieces so we all understand it a bit better. Check out yesterday and the day before's episodes about survival and how it's changed over time, but today we're talking about cities and survival. What is up with urban areas? Is it better for us to survive in these places than it was in trees and caves and plains? Before we can get into whether or not it's better, we have to figure out what is the minimum we need to survive, right? What is the minimum, absolute bare minimum? We need air, we need food, we need water, we need shelter. We already know all of those things, the basics. But we also, once we group up, need sanitation, proper means for the removal of human waste, because if we don't, we're gonna get disease, we're gonna get toxins, we're gonna die, it's bad. We also need sleep. The more of us that are around, the louder it gets. We need to be able to sleep seven to eight hours a night. It's optimal for human survival. You could also biphasically sleep. That's a whole other thing. You can watch our series on sleep if you want. It's pretty awesome. As with humans, we also require personal space. That's something people don't think about. You can't just pack us in like sardines. But on top of that, we also need touch. So we can't be too far removed from each other because as humans, we've evolved to interact in a social setting, in a community. We gotta have caressing and touching and not just in a sexy, sexy way, also in a friendly way. It's important for human survival, even in just a hug. And space, by the way, isn't just close together. It's also, we need green space. We need living space. We need all sorts of spaces for us to find and be healthy in. And knowing all that stuff and knowing that we live in cities now instead of in trees and we're not hunting and gathering in, anymore, can we get all of those things and satisfy all of those pieces of basic survival while living in an urban area? Yes and no. Let's go with the bad news first. Bad news is cities do have higher rates of some mental health disorders and some diseases. Gerald Crabtree, who is head of genetics at Stanford University, published a paper that states that human intellect has been in decline since we invented cities. And that sort of sounds like cities are making us dumber, which it's kind of what it is. Basically, we're dumber than we were 3,000 years ago because we've slowed that natural selection process that we were talking about earlier, which allows for abnormalities in the genes to continue. To quote Gerald Crabtree, a hunter-gatherer who did not correctly conceive a solution to providing food or shelter probably died, along with his or her progeny. Whereas a modern Wall Street executive that made a similar conceptual mistake would receive a substantial bonus and be a more attractive mate. Clearly, extreme selection is a thing of the past. This is according to, again, head of genetics lab at Stanford University. We classify today survival skills as a disability, and then we medicate for those things. A study showed that in two similar tribes in Kenya, one was nomadic and the other settled and created villages. They found that the tribesmen who were better nourished by hunting and gathering were also the ones who were classified as having ADHD. Does that make sense? I think it does. There is theories that ADHD sprung out of hunter-gatherer societies. The fact that you could sit in the woods and listen quietly and hear every little snap of every twig and be what we would call now distracted by that, but really pay attention to that, is beneficial to a hunter-gatherer society and less so in a industrial society. And it's not just ADHD and it's not just being, you know, a Wall Street banker or having issues with that. More than 10 studies have shown that schizophrenia can be linked to growing up in urban living situations as well. Not to mention higher rates of certain diseases like sexually transmitted infections, higher rates of lower birth weight babies. You're more likely to drink excessively if you live in a city. You're more likely to develop asthma. You have to worry about air pollution, susceptibility to natural disasters, crime. The more people you have in one place, the more terrible stuff we do to each other in all sorts of different ways. There are even higher rates of depression in urban areas and high levels of anxiety, allergies, all sorts of stuff. All of that comes from cities. But that being said, cities are not bad. Inherently, they are not terrible. There are also good things that come out of living in one place. Some of which we mentioned earlier, better access to education, better access to food, better access to other social reasons to be in cities. Some research has found that a genetic variant which reduces the chance of contracting tuberculosis, leprosy, and other diseases is more common in people who live in urban environments. 
which makes sense because we're closer together, we're spreading our diseases around, which sounds kind of gross, but it actually can be beneficial to our immune systems. We also, as I mentioned, have access to education and social skills, but on top of that, we have access to medical care. It's right there on our doorstep. Very different from when you're living out farther away. Food is easier to obtain, not just like going to the grocery store, but a greater variety of foods. You're less limited by what you yourself can grow or what your small town is able to produce. And this is a big one, I think. Entertainment. It seems pretty first world problems to not have entertainment around, but entertainment is very important for our mental health. When they've been studying people for long-term space journeys, the thing that they're most worried about is their psychological pressure because they don't have things that are keeping them entertained. They're getting bored and they're missing out on mental stimulation and that can cause all sorts of issues. We all know that in urban areas, mental stimulation is much easier to come upon than in rural, especially very rural areas. Plus, people in cities are generally healthier due to a culture and social bias of cities. According to the American Public Transportation Association, in 2011, people who were on public transportation saved 865 million hours in travel time. Not to mention the 450 million gallons of fuel, great for the environment. But there's nothing worse than sitting in traffic. That ups your stress level, ups your heat level. That's bad, bad, bad. So cities with public transportation are better than cities without public transportation in that respect, perhaps. Plus, people in cities are just generally healthier. So I'm not bad-mouthing cities. And in fact, if you need one more reason to live in a city, according to a 2013 study in the Annals of Emergency Medicine, the risk of death from violence or accident is higher, not in a city, but in fact in rural areas. People in rural areas are 20% more likely to die from violence or accident. And that's crazy, but it's true. We're still surviving today. Cities might not be the best way to survive, but they're how most humans, more than half of us now on this planet, have been surviving and will continue to do so. We used to fight the environment. We used to have to fight our way across plains and worry about the cold every single day and surviving and growing enough food. And now we're actually working with the environment to make our cities better places, to add green spaces, to cultivate animals that we can help create better environments today and help us all survive better. Because we need the environment to continue surviving, but we also need to create our own spaces and have done so in urban areas. Speaking of surviving, we wanna thank our sponsor, the US Air Force. Humans have kind of gotten used to things being so readily available to them. Airmen of the US Air Force learn to survive and also be awesome at the same time. Whether it's overcoming poverty to become a nurse and officer or becoming the first female Thunderbird pilot, these airmen are doing what others thought was impossible. So thanks to them for sponsoring this episode of Test 2 Plus. Let me know your thoughts about human survival in urban areas down in the comments. What do you prefer, urban or rural living? And please subscribe to Test 2 Plus if you haven't already, and click here now to see earlier episodes about human survival. We've done two so far, we've got two more to come. Thanks for watching Test 2 Plus, and we'll see you tomorrow.